please join me in welcoming Joyce Sterk. Joyce. <laughs> Joyce is the Managing Director of Brand Protection and Financial Services at Blue Cross Blue Shield Association, which protects and enhances the blue brands by administering the association's license agreements and the licensure and performance monitoring programs. Previously, Joyce was with CNA Insurance in various management and actuarial roles. In addition, she has served on several boards and committees with the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, as well as other organizations. Joyce is a current and founding member of the Kendall College School of Business Senior Advisory Board. Next, I'd like to introduce you to Noel Hera. <laughs> Noel serves as Business Development Director of the SALO Project, providing financial staffing to firms seeking experienced accounting and finance professionals for interim projects and direct hire positions. Before SALO, Noel was an associate partner for Gallup Consulting in Chicago, where he worked with global organizations to manage human capital, increase customer engagement, and enhance financial performance. Noel is also a current and founding member of the School of Business Junior Advisory Board. Next, we have Dr. Bruce Bloom. Bruce is President and Chief Science Officer for Partnership for Cures. His career experience spans law, healthcare, clinical research, insurance, regulatory affairs, product development, and not-for-profits. He has lectured at Northwestern University and the University of Illinois, teaching both business law and risk management. He has also owned and operated two art businesses and a franchise food business, and is currently a trustee of the Menninger Clinic Foundation. Bruce is what we call at Kendall a triple threat as he serves as a business adjunct faculty member, is the vice chair of the School of Business Senior Advisory Board, and is a member of the Kendall College Charitable Trust. Last but not least is Richard Metzler. <laughs> Richard has had a long career in management consulting from working and managing within existing consulting firms to founding his own. He worked for Krasip, McCormick & Paget, now Towers Perrin, and later founded Metzler & Associates, a firm of 50 consultants, which today is known as Navigant Consultants. His work in the airlines industry provided him with significant regulatory experience, which he later used in the utilities industry. Richard also previously opened a hedge fund that traded 1,500 cap stocks. Richard is a new member of the School of Business Senior Advisory Board here at Kendall, and he is also co-author of the book, The Wisdom of Wizards, Insights from Leading Consultants. And so I have a copy of the book here. If you'd like to look at it later, feel free to see me. I'm happy to share it with you. Um, and I've, you'll see that my copy is sort of dog-eared because I have used it quite a bit. So regarding tonight's format, I will start off asking the panel some questions I have prepared in advance. We'll devote at least the last 15 to 20 minutes of the panel session to your questions. And I ask that Judith help me stay on schedule by signaling me at that time. When you checked in this evening, you should have received a card allowing you to write down any questions you'd like to submit. And so feel free to keep those cards out while we're talking with the panel. Um, and then go ahead and write on them. And Judith will come around at the appropriate point and collect those from you. I will then pose as many questions as possible from the group, time permitting. I'm sure our panelists will also be around after the session should you wish to continue the conversation as well. As I prepared for tonight's session, I put on two different hats, one as employer and educator through my role at Kendall College and as well through my past work experiences, and the other hat as a consultant myself. I have owned and operated Plan B Consulting for over six years now and have had both positive and negative experiences with clients and client sponsors. I think you will find that through the questions posed tonight, we all have a lot in common. And so with that, I'm going to open up the first question to everybody on the panel to briefly tell me, give us an overview of what experience you have had in hiring and working with consultants, and what current role do you serve in this regard? And uh, we'll start with Bruce. So in my uh, years as a owner or a senior executive at a number of different companies, I've worked with consultants who are as big as one person to one of the, the big four consulting companies. I would say overall my experience was good. Um, 
I don't have any single experience that I would say was perfect. Um, and I've learned a lot about how to engage consultants myself because I realized along the way that many of the things I blame the consultant for were probably just as much my fault. And I hope to share some of those things with you tonight so that you can help me when I hire you make sure I don't make the same mistakes again. Good. Okay, Richard? Thank you. Um, 20, 29, 30 years in the management consulting business. Can you all hear me in, through this microphone? Uh, and, and topping that off was um, founding my own firm called Metzler Group. We took that public on the NASDAQ in 96. And, um, and then it's morphed over the years uh, onto the big board and it's called Navigant today. Its ticker symbol is NCI. I still track that stock, by the way. I trade it on occasion. Uh, but never made much money on it since, that, since my early association with it. Uh, with, with respect to um, experience, uh, I'll, I'll talk about it from, from this perspective. I worked across the United States. Um, I think at this point in time I have 48 states and 39 countries to my credit. We worked in Europe, we worked in Britain, Australia, and uh, in almost every state in the Union. Uh, over that period of time, I've also hired maybe 250 consultants, probably more. I can't keep track of them. I know it's about 125 MBAs from the various schools. Uh, so we have a pretty, I have a pretty good idea, I think, of what it takes to succeed in the business. Uh, I grew with the business over the years. That's what I always found fascinating about management consulting was that if you were capable of growing personally, then there was always a career track that would take you to the next stage. Uh, very often, uh, many individuals don't, and it turns out to be a three or four year proposition, particularly with the major firms. But I found over the years, over those 30 years, there was always a new stage you could take yourself to if you recognized it and aspired to it, and then finally the whole thing culminated in starting a firm, growing a firm, and then selling a firm, which, uh, which is really a nice thing to do. Uh, so that's my background and perspective, and um, you'll hear more perspectives, I'm sure, as the evening goes on. I've actually had experience now in two different models of consulting. At Gallup, I went in with a large organization, two very large clients with a methodology. My role in that was to find out as much as I can about the business and see how our company's methodology and sciences could help that business uh, solve its big business challenges, its big global challenges. And it was very, very different from what I do today, where I'm, at my role at Salo, for all practical purposes, I'm a people broker. I'm not bringing big methodologies, I'm not bringing big thinkings to the table, I'm bringing humans, one human in most cases, that can solve the business's challenges where I am finding people who, we, we say that they're the Navy SEALs of finance and accounting. My job is to find out what's going on at a company within a specific department and then find them an individual who's delivered a solution to that on time, on budget, and they're bringing their experience versus the firm's methodology to the table, which are two very unique perspectives on the consulting business. Joyce? Hello, everyone. Um, my experience has been um, quite different from um, the other three panelists. I've been on projects that have used consultants. And um, we've had some very long-term projects, and then we've had some quick-hit projects. Um, I would say that all of my experiences have been um, positive because we've generally reached an outcome that we were happy with, and I hope the consultant was happy with, too. But as Bruce mentioned, you know, there were a couple of, you know, pebbles in the road, and um, both sides probably contributed to some of them. But I hope that as I've worked over my career, which is longer than I'd like to admit, um, I have learned from that and have enjoyed working with consultants. I like to do it because, um, you know, you hire consultants because you either don't have enough resource to do it yourself or you don't have the skills to do it yourself. 
So there's always an opportunity to learn. And so I hope that when I work with consultants and my staff works with consultants, we go at it with that idea in mind. Thank you. Okay, so this term consultant can mean a lot of different things to different people. And it certainly probably has changed over time. Um, and to a small company might be something different than a large company. Um, and certainly gets into terminology like freelancers, et cetera. So um, I guess I'd ask uh, Noel if you can respond to how do you define a consultant, and then I'll ask Richard to also follow up. So. Well, the, the definition of consultant is interesting in my business because Salo is, if you look at our SIC code, we're a staffing firm and we place individuals into our, our client organizations that meet a background. Now, we call everybody a consultant uh, as part of the jargon, but about half of what we do is not quote unquote consulting, it's staff augmentation. It's you have something going on in your business, you don't have enough hands on deck to solve the problem, and we bring you somebody. Uh, it might be a maternity leave, unexpected illness, they're just doing someone's job, they're not solving big problems. The other side, which is where I truly, coming from a big consulting company, I look at the definition of consulting. You have a big problem in your organization and nobody here knows how to solve it. And that's where I really define the role of a consultant. They're coming in to help the business find a solution to their business problem and they're leading that solution versus implementing on what someone else has asked them to do. Both are key roles, both require oftentimes the same type of resource, the same person to do both roles, but I define them very differently when I'm scoping a project between consulting and implementing on someone else's strategy. Richard? Does anybody remember the old story about the consultant who borrows your watch to tell you what time it is? Richard, I'm going to ask you to just hold your mic a little closer. Okay. Um, 